Welcome back. Thank you for joining me for another video. As usual, I'm going to start this video off by picking a topic. I'm going to explore that topic through art. The topic for today's video is going to be time. So time is an interesting thing. It's invisible, but at the same time inescapable. It's something that can be measured scientifically, but the human experience of time is extremely relative and extremely subjective. But let's not go too far down that rabbit hole. Let's bring it back and start talking about the project for today. I want to create a piece of art where the determining factor in how the artwork turns out is time. I want the image, the final image, to be completely dependent on how much time was used in this piece. So I got to figure out some sort of technique some sort of setup, some sort of something that will create completely different images based on time. So next up, we got to start thinking about what changes with time and how can we capture it in a piece of art. I find myself thinking a lot about nature documentaries and how they use time-lapse footage to convey the passage of time. So one thing you always see is like ice melting. They use ice melting to demonstrate the changing seasons. So winter turning into spring, night turning into day. They use ice melting as a sort of visual tool to demonstrate time passing. Maybe I could use ice in this piece of art. The issue is water isn't really a good medium for art. So it will freeze, it will melt, which would be important, but it'll also evaporate and disappear. So water is kind of out, but maybe I could freeze something else. So what comes to mind first is ink, right? I can make like an ice cube out of ink and put it on, um, probably like a piece of paper would be the best medium, the best surface to put the ice cube on. So I could freeze a cube of ink and set it on a piece of paper and just sort of like let it melt. I think that could be an interesting starting point. But before I make a whole bunch of ink ice cubes, I think I first have to figure out the best type of ink to use. So I'm gonna make some small pieces of ice out of different kinds of ink and test which one freezes and which one melts the best. The three types of ink that I'm going to be testing are Higgins Fountain Pen India Ink. It is a non-waterproof black ink. Speedball Super Pigmented Acrylic Ink. Actually an ink I've never worked with before, but it does have a really nice, deep, dark color to it. The last is Waterproof India Ink. India Ink is basically the go-to for nice, dark, permanent ink. It's actually so permanent, I have some in my arm. That's a story for another time. Maybe not the smartest thing I've ever done. The Higgins fountain pen ink froze well and melted at a steady rate. Good job, no notes. The acrylic ink didn't fully freeze even after spending several days in the freezer. The ink formed ice crystals, but these crystals did not solidify into a cube. Instead, it formed more of a slush that melted as soon as it touched the paper. India ink. When the India ink froze, the pigment seems to have separated from the water in the ink. The water slowly melts away over time, which leaves a mushy pile of pigment on the paper that never fully returns to liquid. So it looks like the best bet is going to be the Higgins fountain pen ink. The other thing I learned from this test was that I should definitely wear gloves from this point forward. So I know earlier in the video, I said that the ink would be frozen into an ice cube, but I actually don't think a traditional ice cube shape is really going to work for this project. What I want is for the ink to slowly melt into the paper, making a spot that gets progressively larger over time. And I think that a round shape is actually going to work better for this purpose. Let me demonstrate real quick. So imagine this ruler is the surface of the paper. Now imagine this roll of tape is a rounded piece of ice. As you can see, it only has one fairly small point of contact with the paper. 
which means that as the ice sphere melts, you'll first get a pretty small spot of ink on the paper that will progressively get larger as the sphere melts more and more. So this is a tray that's just going to make a bunch of small spheres. All I got to do is fill it up with ink, put it in the freezer, and then we should be good to go, right? So by doing the ink test, I actually discovered something else, which is that the paper I'm using is not as absorbent as I had hoped. I've actually tried this on a couple of different kinds of paper, and the ink doesn't really soak in very well. It leaves kind of like a puddle sitting on the paper. I'm thinking that some sort of fabric would actually make a much stronger and more absorbent surface, which means I get to take a trip to one of my favorite places to shop in Chicago. The Textile Discount Outlet in Pilsen. This huge warehouse has just about any kind of fabric you can imagine. You just have to find it. Signs and labels are few and far between in that store. After searching the warehouse, I found two types of fabric that looked like they would work, so I decided to put them to the test. The fabric on the left did a good job absorbing the ink, but the fabric on the right was totally unabsorbent. It actually looked kind of trippy. So we have our ice balls, we have our fabric that's gonna be like our canvas, now we have to somehow combine the two to make a piece of art. So my idea is to use each of these ice balls essentially as a, uh, a pixel. So set up a grid, place the ice balls along the grid. The longer an ice ball is left to melt, the more ink soaks into the fabric, which makes the pixel darker. Using this technique, we can kind of make a very low resolution black and white image. Ugh, I got this, I got this. I got this. I got this. <laughs> I'm keeping that in there. Since the image is gonna be so low resolution, I have to pick something really simple to make. And since the topic of this video is time, I would also like that image to be related to the concept of time in some way. So I've decided to make an image of a crescent moon. The moon is probably one of the oldest timekeeping devices there is. The calendar we use, which is called the Gregorian calendar, is based on Earth's rotation around the sun. That's called a solar calendar. And solar calendars, I'm not gonna say they're new, the earliest known evidence of one being used was about 2,500 years ago in Egypt, but they are much newer than lunar calendars, which are calendars based on the moon's rotation around the Earth instead of the Earth's rotation around the sun. Lunar calendars have been in use for so long that we actually don't know when the earliest lunar calendars were, but scholars think that they are thousands of years older than solar calendars. I took a simple picture of a moon that I made in Adobe Illustrator and used the mosaic tool in Photoshop to pixelate the image. I then drew out a grid on paper and wrote out how dark each pixel needed to be. I figured this out by using the eyedropper tool to find the amount of black in each square. Then I marked that down on my grid.
Alright, so what do I have to say about this project? Overall, I think this project was a success. It was a kind of new experimental approach to making a drawing, I guess you would call it a drawing. And I think it actually worked out pretty well. Um, I've never made anything that looked quite like it. I wasn't sure how it would turn out, but I think it's cool. This was a journey. It was probably one of the most excruciatingly boring pieces of art I've ever had to make. Watching frozen ink melt in real time gets old pretty fast. So this is definitely one of the most time consuming projects I think I've ever done, which is kind of appropriate uh, considering the topic for the video is time. So thanks for watching all the way to the end. Thanks for checking out my video. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe. It's a huge help to the channel. If you enjoyed the music from today's video, I have a link below where you can check out more music by my very talented friend, Hunter Brown. All right, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.